Hi, thanks for the opportunity to present today. I'll be presenting the work so far on the NEARS analysis pipeline. This work was uh, a big uh, fruitful collaboration between the Michael Bohr lab and the Lucas Mueller lab. And uh, I wanna give a big thanks to Jenna Hirschberger for her work on the R waves package. Um, waves is really the engine behind this work, enabling a variety of different uh, model algorithms for fitting NEARS data, as well as uh, um, different cross-validation schemes. And so I, I invite you to take a look at, at her article and to look at the documentation for the R waves package. Um, so you could use it uh, on your own outside of Freeface if you want to. But of course, here I'm presenting an integration we did um, with the R waves package and Freeface. And so this involves bringing the data and the analyses together. And so here I want to start um, with a schematic. And so you imagine a, a user and they have a near, near infrared uh, spectroscopy data in a comma separated file on their computer. And assuming they have uh, an internet connection, they could interact with the Briefbase, uh, the Briefbase web service. And through that web service, they could upload their near infrared data into the Briefbase um, database backend, and it would be stored in, in our JSON B um, format that we developed. And then the user could continue to interact over the, the, the web connection. And they have access to um, query tools that enable data export so they can export uh, their own near infrared data as well as um, uh, the aggregated data from, from other experiments and other users. Um, that data export can be in the format of a file, from a separated file, but it could also be um, the Brappy reading API uh, format. And with Readbase um, serving as a wrapper over the our waves package, it can also produce um, plots. So as we'll see later on, this is a plot of the near infrared spectrometry data itself for a number of samples. And the waves package enables the analysis pipeline, which involves four steps. First, training the model um, for a phenotype of interest then saving the model into the database, then later predicting um, new phenotypes uh, for uh, new infrared spectroscopy data, and finally saving those um, newly predicted phenotypes. And of course, the, the user can continue interacting with Freebase to then export you know, those predictions and those models. Um, now, moving to uh, the, the demo version. So here I'm on a, on a local instance of uh, Freebase. And so here uh, I, I show the near infrared spectroscopy data format that. Um, users should use to upload data into the database. You'll notice the first column is of sample identifiers. Then we have two columns here, um, the device ID and, and comments. These are optional. And then finally, there's columns uh, for all of the different spectra. And these columns are, are um, just headered, headered by the, the wavelength of the spectrum. So here from 350 
up to um, 2,500, I believe. And so here, um, in this inst database instance, I have a single field trial. And it has, um, it's, a, it's just a test field trial with uh, 20 plots. And it has um, these 160 tissue samples. And the, those samples match up to the, uh, the, sample, the, the identifiers in this file. So that's what's already in the database. Then if I go to manage NEARS and upload, I can select the near infrared data type. Um, here I can create a new protocol. So I'll just call it NEARS1. And this is testing. And then finally here, I can select that data file I just showed. And uh, this is a verification and then a storage step. Here's that uh, plot coming out of waves or on the x-axis is the wavelengths and the spectral values on the y. And this identifiers, identifies any outliers in the data and removes those outliers. And then here we can uh, store the data. Um, Okay, so it says the upload was successful. So now uh, that was the um, upload. Uh, we can, as I mentioned, you can download uh, NEARS, you can plot uh, various spectra. Um, but the first thing is to train a NEARS model. And for this, we, we first need a to create a data set. And data sets are created through the wizard. Um, so they are, uh, here I'm creating a data set with that field experiment, the sessions involved, as well as um, this trait, uh, dry matter content. So here I can see. Create that. If I then go back to the NEARS page, I can train a NEARS model. So I first select the, the data set of the one I just created. Go to the next. You can specify a testing, um, but if you don't, it'll be randomly uh, partitioned from the training data set. And you select the trait that you want to um, train the model against. And then finally here, um, there's various algorithms in the waves package, the partial least squares regression, and there's a few um, tuning parameters that can be specified. So here we see the, the model was uh, trained. We can see um, some summary statistics coming out of the model. Uh, we can save the model. So here, let's say it's uh, news model as one and public. So the model was saved. The models in three phase have their own um, 
they're their own object. So you can download the, the RDS file. So this is like the save weights um, in that partial least squares regression. And you can download the data that went in and the output of the model. We go back here, and we can predict our phenotypes um, by feeding in new near inference vector data. So, in, in this case, I just use the same uh, data set as before. Here, uh, you select the model that you want to uh, predict against. So we can see predictions um, for the um, plots in the data set that we selected. And we can then uh, save those uh, predicted results. Uh, So it was saved, and uh, if you go to the analyses page, um, the, the, the predicted uh, phenotype is, is here. The trait is a, it's a combination of the trait that was predicted and the algorithm that was used. And the, not every analysis of the uh, model so that's what's uh, that linkage is demonstrated here between the model page and the analysis. And um, those predictions can be uh, downloaded. And so they will, they are and they're readily accessible. Uh, so with that, I'd, I'd like to thank um, everyone in the Mueller lab and uh, Jenna, Jenna again, and um, the Mike Ward lab, as well as uh, Chris Samoas and uh, Brian Ellerbrock in, in the Mueller lab. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out. Uh, thank you.